to At the Disney Movies with the Hearts. I'm Kelly. I'm David. And this week, Yokiaro Disney Movie. <laughs> Beverly Hills Chihuahua from 2008. Ruff, ruff. Bark, bark. Find your bark. <laughs> what, flying deer bark? <laughs> no, I said find your bark. Oh, find your bark. Yeah. No moss. Welcome to the home of the rich and famous, where no one is more pampered and privileged than the Beverly Hills Chihuahuas. It's not easy to find a mate with papers. Hey, talk to the paw. No moss. I am super curious to know what you think about this movie, because I'm sure if you've been listening, you know that we're Chihuahua lovers, we're Chihuahua owners. Not that that plays a ton into this, but it plays some. <laughs> It plays a lot into this, because I, I guarantee you, this movie should not be enjoyed by anyone. It's not very good. It's not a great movie, no. But I kind of liked it a lot. Yeah, like I kind of liked it too, <laughs> because it has chihuahuas and dogs. And I mean, I just love dogs in general, but... But it's literally Beverly Hills Chihuahua. But it's extra with Chihuahua. And of course... The lead Chihuahua looks like a bleached out version of our girl Chihuahua, which doesn't hurt. No, she's very cute, that's for sure. Yeah. And I mean, I think we're both definitely influenced by our love of Chihuahuas, because if it was any other dog, if it was Beverly Hills Sheepdog or Beverly Hills Dachshund, we'd be like, oh, that's cute, but we wouldn't be like, oh my god, Chihuahua. Why don't we go of the minute of the hottest dog right now, Beverly Hills Frenchie. Uh, Or is it Beverly Hills Corgi? No, Frenchie's definitely the dog of the... Corgi's so three years ago. (laughs) Oh my god, Corgi is so 2017. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely (laughs) Frenchie now. Yeah, that's probably true. So what what do you... David, what's your prediction for the new hot dog of 2022? I'm going to say it won't be until 2023, but I'm going to go... I'm feeling a return of the lab. Uh, I don't know. It's pretty basic. (laughs) not special great dog though great dog yeah, well, most dogs are great dogs i mean yeah but a lab is especially great because they're good for anybody who can be remotely active enough to get the dog exercise let me read the synopsis really quick yeah let's Be-be- do that beverly hills chihuahua family comedy kids action adventure get ready for a hilarious fun-filled adventure starring chloe a diamond-clad ultra pampered <laughs> beverly hills chihuahua who gets lost while on vacation in Mexico. Poppy, an amusing chihuahua who's crazy about Chloe, springs into action and heads south of the border to rescue her, while Chloe gets help from Delgado, her newfound friend and self-appointed protector. Enjoy this heartwarming and outrageously funny tale, proving once again that good things do come in small packages. (laughs) Give me a break. You know what, though? (laughs) This movie definitely is good for kids. Like, kids will like this movie no matter what. A hundred percent. And then they're going to go, Daddy, can I have a chihuahua? I want a chihuahua. And they got to be like, oh, not until you're eight, nine, or ten, because chihuahuas don't like little kids. (laughs) No, and they're very difficult to train yeah so so the director raha gosnell he um he had done amazing things like never been kissed which also starred drew barrymore big mama's house which i thought were all directed by tyler perry i guess not things like scooby-doo the smurfs yeah and he had a lot of experience as an editor that's kind of how he got started because he edited a ton of 90s movies and then so i think kind of how it transitioned because he was an editor on the original home alone and then his first like directing role was home alone 3 so i think that he kind of weaseled his way in there into directing he he worked his way more than weaseled well yeah. yeah but i mean obviously he's never done anything that's real great he's just kind of a although it's very weird that he didn't do any tv no he's just a low-level movie director and it's also weird that he didn't do the two sequels to this movie because this movie has two sequels but i don't think either one of them came out in theaters no they didn't but it's just so our actors obviously the star drew barrymore so i didn't see her name in the opening credits like i must have just missed it yeah well they showed it last 
Right. I didn't see it. And so I spent the entire movie, every time that dog talked, I was, it's not Drew Barrymore, because it sounded like her, obviously. Yeah, I was going to so say. I spent the entire movie distracted thinking, who else could that be? Because it's not Drew Barrymore. I didn't see her name in of the credits. Of course it's Drew Barrymore, yeah. <laughs> well, obviously it is. But I spent the whole movie, like, in denial. That's so weird, because there's nobody else it could possibly be. It, well, right. And that's what I was like, oh, it's some unknown person. I just was convinced it wasn't Drew Barrymore, because I didn't pick up her name in the credits at the beginning because i must right. have been writing something down or something yeah, probably because it was clearly true very much she does have a very distinctive voice very one of distinct. the most yeah. yeah you know i've got a dentist in beverly hills who could do something about that yellowing what i mean i just get what? the idea that teeth are important in your line of work you don't like uh, my smile hey watch it buddy say it don't spray it because the way she talks is weird, and she has a distinctive voice on top of it. And she can't do anything other than her own voice. Right. And, I, I mean, I'm surprised that she agreed to do this movie, because it's... Oh, they must have paid her a bundle. But this is kind of after Drew Barrymore was done being an artist. This was when Drew Barrymore just did stuff for money. I would guess this is around 51st Dates, Drew Barrymore. Yeah... Yeah. When she was just kind of done, you know, she's done her thing. Well, and she worked with this guy before, so maybe she really liked working with him. So, But I've never seen that movie, so I don't know. Oh, it's really cute, though, actually. Yeah, I actually kind of really like Never Who Been else Kiss. is in it? Who's the other lead? Oh, it's a guy. I, he's like a not well-known guy. Hmm. But, um, oh, what's his face that was married to Courtney Cox? What's his name? Uh, David Arquette? David Arquette is in it. He plays <laughs> her brother. Oh, oh okay. Um... But I want to know who the love interest is. That's okay, the problem well, that I have. I'm having on. a hard time well, with. Let me pull it up really quick because now it's going to... Is it one of the eight people she married during that time? Um, I don't... No, it's not. It's, it's um... not Justin Long? No. Um... <laughs> it's not, it's not uh, Tom Green? No, this was before that time. I mean, this movie came out in 1999. So, so this is... Well, yeah. No, it's, um, it's a gentleman named Matthew Varton. Oh, I have no idea, yeah. But he, I mean, he was in, I guess his most notable thing is that TV show Alias. He was a big star in I that. I don't know anything about he's, that. Um, he's just been in a lot of... Stuff. Things. Random no. things. Yeah, but, no. Um, no, and it has Gary Marshall is in it as, a, oh. as her boss. your own role. Yeah, just Fair a bunch enough. of other, there's yeah. not a bunch of super famous people in it. But not that that's what you know Drew Barrymore from, but you all know who Drew Barrymore is. We don't need to get into that. No. Uh, the other lead, Poppy, was played by George Lopez, who is just basically famous for being George Lopez, the comedian. So did he do stand-up before he did his TV show? Is that his oh, thing? Oh, yeah. So I, yeah. Don't, I don't know. I don't yeah. really know what he's famous so for. George Lopez is famous for being a stand-up, and then he had... The George Lopez show, well, which was that. fine, and he also had George Lopez tonight as his as his foray into being a late night host. But basically, George Lopez is famous for being George Lopez. He's a funny guy. Well, and he, he does his thing. He just yeah, he just does all these bit parts in all these movies now. Yeah, now that's kind of his career is just doing stereotypical Mexican parts. That's which was always kind of his thing. He did a lot of stereotypical Mexican humor. Yeah. Which is fine. I, I love the guy, but whatever. Uh, and then we have Piper Paraboo. Which any from Coyote Ugly. Yeah, okay. Any any woman under that's between the ages of probably twenty five and forty, you all have seen this terrible movie and you all secretly know that this is a terrible movie, but you love this movie. It's a quintessential girl. What, movie. Coyote Ugly? Yes. I hated it. it. You know, it's it's um, a it's a really bad movie, but that's what that's what she's most known and for. And I feel like that the only reason anybody knows who this chick is is because her name is memorable and she might be the most basic hot chick that you can cast in anything. Like oh yeah. we need a girl to play hot chick number four. Piper Paraboo, because I've heard the name, but I could I could have never told you who it was until now. Now I'm like, oh, yeah. well, okay. And then more recently, and I did actually see a couple episodes of this TV show. She was in Covert Affairs for several years, which was actually like a spy type thing, which was actually not a bad show from what I saw, but it's just like a generic TV show. It's not anything. That special. wasn't before this. No, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it was during this time because spoiler alert fun facts say that it was before this oh well i don't know yeah <laughs> because manolo was in the covert affairs with her oh the guy who plays 
Sam. Sam. Yeah, and he's a pretty prolific Spanish he actor. He is a very prolific Spanish actor. And it's clear, actually, in this movie that that guy actually can really act. Yeah. And they cut him out of 91% of this movie, which is unfortunate. He could have done a lot more, which would have been really nice. Yeah. And so he's in, well, I mean, re- most recently and well-known is something called Who Killed Sarah, which is <laughs> on Netflix. And then also he's in Narcos, which I've heard is a really good show. Yeah, yeah. I've heard that, too. And that's what I led with was Narcos. I mean, obviously... It- Seems like most people would know him from Narcos. Yeah. Um, and then, who should have been second in the listing of stars, Andy Garcia, who plays... The, de- the um, de- uh, Delgado? Delgado. Delgado. Yeah. Thanks for the offer. But someone has to go after El Diablo. Besides, Princesa, I think you can take care of things yourself now. The German Shepherd? Yeah. from And people know him from Ocean's Eleven, Hill Street Blues... Things to do in Denver when you're dead. He was a huge 80s and 90s star. I mean, yeah. and maybe still is. I don't know as much if he is now. Probably not as an old guy. No, Doesn't I mean, seem like he does a lot. I think he just kind of works when he wants to and just gets added to little things like this. I mean, that you makes know? sense. But he was a he was a huge character actor throughout the 80s and 90s and, and a leading man. I mean, big guy, great voice, really did a good job in this movie. Yeah, and... We both kind of were like, what? When we watched the credits, the Jamie Lee Curtis makes a return as a, a small part in the movie. But Extremely small. As the owner of Chloe Vivian. But yeah. it was just, when we saw that in the credits, I, I mean, I was like, what? Like, <laughs> why would you do this movie? And I'll throw a, a quick shout to Edward James Olmos, who plays El Diablo. What, in, was, what is he in? I don't remember him. In one of the best movies ever, Stand and Deliver from the 80s. Oh, wait, the, the teacher guy, right? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah That is a yeah, good movie. Yeah, it's He's a fantastic a, movie. He also plays Selena's dad in the movie Selena. <laughs> I've never seen Selena. <laughs> but, but Stand and Deliver is the best, wait, and he is awesome in that movie. You've never seen Selena? David. It's a, it's a um, let's say, let's call it a... David. No, no, no. I have a protest against... I, I just won't. I can't. David. Jennifer Lopez. I just can't do it. It's actually a really good I'm, movie. I've heard it's great. I refuse to watch it. No, it's a good movie, actually. He, if you, I get it. I get it. He's great in that movie. I'm sure he is. I love I loved Edward James almost, but I can't do it. Okay. I want to give one shout out. It's really small. I had to go deep into the casting, but just because of our appreciation for this movie that she's from. So one of her friends that was at the beginning where she's like oh put on your swimsuit and join us blah 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 blah, blah. her name is marguerite more morale and she plays katie from what hot american summer oh her, her, yeah her, her face looked so familiar and i was like who is that i have to know <laughs> so i made a little note that i had to look it up and i was like oh it's katie from what hot american so summer. i will give the other shout out again then to to jose yazpik who oh, yeah. plays the actual villain, who, as far as I can tell, is a super prolific, award, multiple award-winning Spanish-language actor. Yeah. as And he doesn't do a lot other than just look like a villain and get arrested. Yeah. But he did a good enough job in his role to make you hate him as a dogfighter. Like, yeah, he's just neither here nor there. That wasn't really... A- but I, I want to shout him out because he's clearly a good actor oh, who yeah, just kind of got chopped out of this movie. Because this movie actually could have used a couple extra scenes of villainry, but it just didn't... It, they didn't do it. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Chihuahua. <laughs> yeah, the Chihuahuas in between us right now are not making this easy for me. They need to lay down. See, that's the one thing that they left out is the burrowing. <laughs> <laughs> Chihuahuas burrow. Oh, they do burrow like little animals. Um, so, do you got any fun facts, Kelly? Uh, yeah, I have a couple. The two lead dogs were both rescue dogs who were oh. within a couple days away from being put down. Oh, and then they, I believe that. They were spotted, which I think is very cute. They just look like chihuahuas. I mean, that's all you really need is just a chihuahua. I had a fun fact that's kind of a funky fun fact. They wanted Reese Witherspoon to be Chloe originally. Yeah. Which is weird. It's stupid because she's already in the best Chihuahua movie of all time, Legally Blonde. 
That's probably why they wanted her to be the movie. Yeah, but that's dumb. You don't do that. Yeah, no, it you is You don't dumb. make her the voice of a chihuahua when she's already in the best chihuahua movie of all time. Yeah. That's just gilding the lily. You don't do that. So, Disney was... I also had the Reese Witherspoon fact. <laughs> but um, Disney was heavily criticized for making this movie in general because they had... There was a fear that it would spawn a mania of adopting chihuahuas the same way it did for Dalmatians in, from 101 Dalmatians and that then there would be a bunch of chihuahuas that were abandoned. So, which I mean, happened a little bit with the Yokiro Taco Bell commercials yeah, and also happened a little bit with Paris Hilton, which was just probably a few years before this. Yeah, and I think that that was I don't know, I just think if someone really is, you're going to watch a movie and, oh, I need to adopt that dog, like, I don't know. But you're dumb but also, at least the one silver lining for chihuahuas is at least they're kind of rehomable. Sort of. I mean, sort of. there are they get a bad reputation, kind of. But a lot of people like chihuahuas. That's, I mean, I'm just saying. If there's ever another boom, we'll be rehoming some chihuahuas. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have any more fun facts? No. Uh, oh, well, other, no, I used mine. Other than, no, wait, I'll throw this in there. Okay. That Cheech was played a chihuahua in all of her. Oh, yeah, I did see that, too. He played a, a little friend. Most of the fun facts were not fun at all. They were a bunch of very technical, like, this is how they trained the like, dog. Like, trying to explain how they didn't uh, abuse any of the animals. I didn't watch this movie thinking that there was a lot of animal abuse going on. Well, so, everybody can kind of f*** <laughs> off. But anytime there's a movie with animals, people just assume that all the animals were abused. Yeah, I, I didn't get that with this movie at all. Yeah. Everybody, like, take a couple deep breaths before you write an internet comment, but whatever. Okay. Last thing. Uh, so, Puerto Vallarta doesn't have any railroads. That makes sense. So, not really a fun fact, but just it was like a, oh, by the way, all those railroad scenes, not a thing. All right. So, let's uh, let's walk through this. Beverly Hills Chihuahua. So, we cut into the Rich Girl song by Gwen Stefani, which is horrible. Yeah, and so I thought, go actually, just real quick, going into this movie, I we didn't really establish, we both had never seen this, obviously, but no. I remember when it came out, and so in my head, I thought this movie was about the male chihuahua, like a fish out of water, like he needs to become fancy oh. kind of story. I didn't really know anything about it, but my brain kept telling me it was more about him and not about... I thought this was all about the female, but I never realized that they left Beverly Hills. Yeah, no, I thought it was like a fish out of water type. Yeah. Like, I'm a not a fancy chihuahua, and he had to learn to be fancy. That's what I thought this movie was going to be before it started. I definitely had no idea. I really didn't know. Yeah, the Rich Girl song by Gwen Stefani, David's favorite. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's just a compilation of, you know... Fancy Chihuahua things, fancy Rodeo Drive pets. Yeah, and... we we meet Chloe the dog, who is just super fancy, super bougie, super spoiled. Yeah, and we see Jamie Lee Curtis takes her to like a dog spa and to you know dog shopping, and she's buying all these outfits. And the really sad part is, is that there are a lot of dogs. That are treated like this. Yeah, you should never treat a dog like that. It's awful, and it's just... You need to treat a dog like a dog. Correct, sir. It's... Including chihuahuas. PSA, do not treat chihuahuas like lap dogs. Treat chihuahuas like dogs, because that's what they are, and that's what makes them happy. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so basically it's just a big compilation of how wealthy this lady is, and how fancy her dog is, and... They go home and there's, you know, the landscaper, Sam, and his dog, Poppy, who helps with the landscaping. And he's in love with Chloe and he's trying to get her attention and she doesn't have the time of day for her. Which immediately, like, I don't like Chloe. Like, I've... Uh, I'm fine. I'm fine with how they stereotype her as being uh, too much. My booty! Your what? My booty! Forget it! Forget it! Forget it! That's Italian leather, mister. But I'm going to circle back and say, next dog I get, I'm definitely teaching how to dig out spots in the garden if I wanted to, because that is awesome. And so, basically... Vivian, Chloe's owner, has to go to Europe. 
right. for 10 days, and she doesn't want to take Chloe because she has to go to many cities. Oh, and Chloe hates Berlin. So her niece comes over, Piper Perabo's character, Rachel. 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 <laughs> and, Ra- it, you know, Rachel, Chloe's talking. And she's a loser. Yeah, Ra- Chloe's talking <laughs> to Rachel, like, oh, you can't keep a job. Oh, blah, 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 you're so irresponsible. And that's the thing that's, I mean, it's kind of cute, but it's a little weird. Like, the dogs are talking, like, they have human voices, obviously, and they're talking but their mouths are moving sometimes, but not moving other times. I'm okay with that. No, it's I fine. thought it was effective. It's, yeah. it's fine. But if it, you notice, the only time the dogs' mouths are moving is when they're talking to each other. Right. And they're not moving when they're talking to people. So Vivian gets the bright idea of, oh, I can leave Chloe with you. You can, <laughs> you know, you can take care of her and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, I, this is kind of the one. It's like, really? <laughs> Would you? It's the fundamental flaw in this movie. Yeah, is that it is. This lady is so wealthy. You don't think she has, and her dog is so important. You don't think she has three backup dog sitters on yeah, speed absolutely. dial. You're going to leave your niece, who is, quote, irresponsible. Like, With your prized dog? It, that would, I wouldn't even do that. That's the one thing that I'm like, eh, I don't buy that at all. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's, but it's fine. It's just overlook it. Disney magic. <laughs> so she leaves, and then all then you know all the other dogs come over for their play date, and the other her friends are over, and blah blah blah. Uh, what happens? Can't remember. Wait, 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 play date, yeah. And then there's more Poppy love, where Poppy causes a scene at that play date. Oh right, because and then, then she does the has the racist scene with Sam. Yeah, this was really strange. No, it's not strange. It just shows how ignorant Rachel is. It, they're trying to paint a picture yeah. that she's just a dumb, dumb American. Because she goes over to the landscaper um, Sam, and she start and he el does, mexicano el dago, and does the stereotypical horrifying. Which, if he had been, you know, the landscaper for Vivian for so long, and he, oh, she's like my family, and blah, 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 you would think that her niece, who apparently sees her all the time, would know that he's... You know what, though? Some people stay disconnected from that kind of thing, and are just ignorant like that. I, I think it was effective in showing how ignorant she is. Oh, no, it was definitely effective yeah. in that way. Definitely effective. Then they decide they're going to take a trip to Mexico, all the girls. Yeah, all of a sudden. The, the, the beginning of this movie is very strange, because it moves really fast. Yeah, and it's it's well, it's it's weird because they just go. Are you kidding me right now? What? Whatever dog knocked that off? Oh, Luke. Oh. <laughs> um, they go to Mexico, and Chloe's all pissed because she feeds her. She basically gives Chloe fancy feast. That that was clearly that was the can of fancy feast they got yeah. into four. And so. You know, Chloe picks the dog food up and puts it in her shoe. And <laughs> it's like, <laughs> um, and they go out. Chloe knocks a pot off of the balcony by mistake. <sighs> And this random guy, who I assume is one of the owners or the managers... Well, he goes up to see what's going on, because if somebody threw a pot at him, he's going to want to know. And Chloe takes off. I mean, clearly, that's what would happen. Yeah, because Chloe's dumb. and she... Well, I mean, she's a dog. She's a chihuahua. She's curious. She's going out. Well, she's going out to find Rachel. Rachel. And she does, but then she gets abducted. Yeah, immediately dog-napped and taken to dog fighters. Yeah, with all these tough dogs and... Well, just other dogs, really. Yeah, and she's she's like, Rachel's gonna pay for what she's done. And I'm like, ah! literally, ah! you escaped. This is your fault. Like, yeah, you're gonna pay. Like, this this is your fault. You're doing. And so we get a little scene with Rachel and her... Ah! And her ah! basically like... For, forget about the dog. We're Who not cares? helping. Yeah. You. Oh, you did what you could. Let the dog seal its fate. Who cares? Yeah. I'm on the beach. Pretty much. Yeah. And <laughs> Rachel's like, no, I gotta go find the dog. And we go back to the home and her friends have come back because one of them is like sneaking yeah, around. Yeah, this is a really, it's a really weird time warp kind of... It doesn't really make inconsistency. sense. Inconsistency. Because, yeah, her friend is stealing a picture of Chloe, which would have been unnecessary in 2008 because by then we had YouTube, texting, And they probably camera phones. could have found a picture of the dog online. Right, because that comes up later. 
Yeah, um, so I don't know. It's it's whatever. But her friend is trying to steal a picture to help find Chloe. But, but then, Sam catches her. Yeah, and well, Poppy and Sam catch her, oh. and Poppy realizes that you know Chloe's missing, and oh, hold your tacos, and some you know stereotypical Mexican thing. <laughs> there was a lot of that throughout this movie. A yeah, there was. I, I'm not even going to get into the really horrifyingly stereotypical oh, Mexican. Oh, there things. was a ton of it, but yeah. yeah. Hold your tacos. And we go back to the dog fights, and you know, this part was I was like, okay, sure. You know, they have all these. It's a very clearly like a high level dog fighting where people would. Pro- but this is what they would do. They would put a chihuahua against a Doberman just just to laugh at it. That's I, what they would do. I don't think so. If people are trying, if they're trying to make money and people no, are trying to bet on it, no, like nobody would be betting on this part. This is the part that just gets the blood in the water. Ugh, I don't know. It's it's upsetting. Dog. It is very upsetting, and it's not really like even graphic or nothing really happens, but it's just. Dog fighting is pretty much one of the worst yeah. crimes you can possibly yeah, commit. It it's horrible. It's horrifying. That Absolutely. People, like, the person organizing it, if you're the person, you know, stealing dogs, if you're the person attending or paying, like, go die in a hole. Yeah. Like, it's yeah, yeah, awful. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I'd shoot any single person involved in this. There's Ugh. no... There's no... There's no sympathy for these motherfuckers. But, um, so she had already talked to, what's his face, Delgado? Del, what, Delgado. Delgado, the the German shepherd. Well, yeah, because Delgado basically sets up the story of, you don't want to run into El Diablo, and one of the other dogs says, oh no, Delgado's the best, but he got beat by El Diablo once. They set up the whole story right here. Yeah, and so then he, he like, escapes, he lets all the other dogs out, and they get out, and they get Chloe, and they escape. Um, and and the dog fighter guy is like, oh, no, we need that chihuahua, because he somehow he sees the doll. Nobody noticed the diamond necklace until now. When the dog's already out in the fighting ring. Right. Even though he's in charge of this, he's going to be inspecting every dog. Absolutely. And so, it, it, the movie had a lot of little holes like that. But, but that was a huge hole. But of, it's, just, it's just... Of, oh, let's not check this dog for its diamond tags that you could have easily sold for more money than you'd make in 20 dog fights. Which, I mean, if they were to change this movie, they could have had something where the, do- the guy snatched the dog... And ransomed it, you know, that yeah. whole line. And then, you know, but they they just kind of did the movie completely different than I would have done it. But it's fine. Um, Because, like, the the dog, um, Del, Delgado, he could have mm-hmm. been like an undercover police dog, <laughs> like, you know, undercover in just in their criminal mm-hmm. ring, whatever it was. And then he could have, you know, helped her escape. Like, it could have been a totally different movie. But anyways. So... Yeah. So Delgado saves the day. Everybody escapes in the street. The dude wants the Chihuahua. The Day of the Dead. Well, Delgado tries to leave her. He tries to abandon. He's well, like, he does. Okay. He's and like, okay, and she's like, no, we're not doing that. And they send Diablo after the Chihuahua. Which, I mean, I have a soft spot for Dobermans. I really hate how they always like villainize Dobermans because they are good dogs. We had, good we, dogs. We had a Doberman growing up and they, they can be very sweet dogs. And so I just, but they always use him as the villain, you know, Oliver and Company is, do- any any movie, the Dobermans are always the villain, you know, guard dogs because they look mean or whatever, but no, Dobermans are good dogs. Oh, Doby. <laughs> <laughs> so after this, there's the hotel scene where, for a brief moment, Delgado ditches Chloe because he thinks he betrayed her. But oh. then they run into each other again as soon as Diablo picks up her scent. In between all this, we get actually kind of a tiny scene that I really liked where um, Rachel's at the police station and she's, you know, filing a report of the missing dog, blah, 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 blah. But then Vivian calls her. And, and she's, she's barking as Chloe. Yeah, yeah, she's like, oh, let me talk to her. And then she's like, I just, I thought that part was funny. I want to talk to Chloe. Would you put her on? Hi, honey. Hi, honey. But <laughs> so, and then it's right after that all that we that Chloe finally sees her reflection and sees that she's just a dirty old dog. Yeah, because she doesn't understand why she got kicked out of the hotel. And I've been a member here for years, and all the other fancy dogs are like, "Oh, they touched me." Yeah, and, uh, you know that's Which, how she used to be. Right. With all that, and, and she- really, probably still is. She spends the night alone. 
Sam is already in Mexico City helping Rachel look. They're all gonna go look because Poppy wants to go look. And then we get this scene that makes no difference in the movie, and I really wish they would not have included it, of the rich dogs where, oh, Chloe's missing out. You don't think Chloe's in trouble, do you? Oh, yeah. That was a stupid scene. I mean, it could have been cut out, and it was just the only part that was funny about that scene was when the dogs are jumping on the bouncy house and they're like, this party's off the leash. And that, oh like, my God. that was the only part of that scene that was funny. Cause it, it's, I guess. I, I must have missed that line. It's but, dumb. It's really yeah. stupid. So there's, but first there's the dog showdown over the churro piece. Oh, yeah. Cause she's hungry and she's, of course. And she sees the churro and all these other stray dogs come up and she's, you know, freaks out. And they're like, okay, sorry, lady. Bye. But that's where Diablo's, right? behind her yeah and um boo, 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 boo. and delgado saves the day yet again yeah picks her up in his in his mouth and runs away and there's this big thing where they're chasing through the museum they hide in the museum then they're going to Puerto Vallarta. Oh, right. I forgot about the hiding in the museum thing. Yeah, yeah. There's a whole huge museum thing. Yeah. So then we cut back to Vasquez being like, there's a lot of money in this chihuahua. We got to find it. Because he pulled up the website with a picture of the chihuahua and Vivian. Yeah. <sighs> like anybody could have through this whole thing. Disney magic. Yeah. So, um, then, so then there's a little scene where... Chloe bathes in the fountain. Yeah, and then she runs into our characters, which I didn't write down their names. Eh, um, it's the rat and the lizard. I mean, this whole this bit was, was unnecessary I, throughout. I, I liked it, but I also was kind of like, mm. it didn't really have any bearing mm. on anything. Uh. Um, So they con her into getting her necklace. The iguana is like pretending to eat the rat, and then he's like, oh, you saved me. Oh, you know, I work on this ship and I can get the captain to scan your blah, blah, blah. And she's obviously just naive. So she gives him her necklace. And um, when Delgado comes back, he's pissed because he's like, that's the oldest trick in the book. Like, Right, because we find out that actually Delgado was a cop in this time. Yeah, because he goes to find his friends to help them right. read her. Because that's how she got conned. She was by herself. And then Diablo finds the rat with the collar and they tell him where to find her but they're already in the train yard to meet the coyote to smuggle them away yeah and initially delgado tries to stay behind but then he does the typical chase the train jump in the car at the last second bit i mean we kind of skipped over it but rachel and sam had like a kind of adopted these other two dogs. Oh, that's right, yeah. yeah. Poppy finds two of the dogs. Oh, no, that's right after this. They find the stray dogs and bathe them, and it's a very confusing scene. It's not clear why they did this, other than that Poppy led the dogs to them. Yeah, Poppy, like, finds the dogs, because they're two of the dogs that were in the fighting thing, and so... Yeah, they just go back, and she's like, oh, I can take care of them, and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it's very bizarre. Yeah, and it's intertwined with a scene where the rat and the iguana are in a convenience store, and they make a scene, and the shop owner's chasing them, and then the shop owner is like, oh, the rat, blah, 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 and the old necklace, and... Or whatever, I don't know, the dog leash or whatever, I don't know. And then all of a sudden, she's... They make it a point for her to, like help this dog get adopted yeah i really thought the end of the movie she was gonna be like this is gonna be my job i'm gonna help yeah but who cares about what no i know but it was weird because they made it this whole point could have been cut out because it had no relevance well i think the only relevance is that it made her human enough for Sam. Yeah, it, it was just weird. Um, but it was also really sweet. Like, oh my god, the dog gets adopted, which oh, tugs it. It's a home. It tugs at my heartstrings. Of course, of course, of course. Um, um, so then we get, yeah, because the shopkeep ends up with the dog and the diamonds. And Delgado causes a big scene on this train because they, all the, somehow all the dogs are on one car that they suddenly have to hide from somebody from the train conductor and yeah which makes very little sense so he causes this big scene and chloe jumps out on top of him and they're not on the train anymore so they're wandering through the desert and then at the same time as sam and rachel are following the train north because they heard about the incident from 
the cop. Right. It comes out that Delgado can't smell, but it's all in his head, and it's the whole story of, like, why he can't smell anything. But they hear mountain lions, which you would never hear a mountain lion unless it was right in front of you. Right, and also mountain lions don't travel in groups Packs, at, at yeah. all. They're singular animals. So, so we find out that he lost his smell in his own head because of some failure that he had against El Diablo with his cop partner before. Yeah, and, you know, then we get these CGI, clearly CGI mountain Yeah, terrible looking cougars. They they pick, yeah, we'll we'll get into that when we talk about the the cinematography, but, so they, yeah, there's three mountain lions, which immediately I'm like, that's, mountain lions do not travel in groups, no, they're, they are notoriously isolated. Solitary creatures. But then all of a sudden there's a big dust cloud comes. uh, It ends up being just a ton of chihuahuas. Which... I really wish they would have spent more time on this whole segment of the movie because it was yeah. one of the more interesting, it like, was. amusing part of the movies. I wish more of the movie would have just been focused on these herd of chihuahuas. It was almost kind of reminded me of all of the dogs and up, like their little society yeah, yeah. culture thing. Um, but basically, Hi. Hi. <laughs> there's just all these chihuahuas and it's like a chihuahua cult. And there's like a it's chihuahua a city. song. It's just a chihuahua and- city. Because they're, you know, he's telling her, you have to find your bark, and we're mighty, and we're not. Do not insult yourself as a lap dog. Yeah, and it was just like, chihuahua empowerment. Your Ooh. bark will come when you most need it. Where are we? You are in Chihuahua, birthplace of our mighty breed. I was born in Beverly Hills. See, si, but your ancestors came from here. The Aztec people left long ago, but we remain. Wow. Um, and, and so then we find the rat ratting out Diablo to Poppy. So Poppy kind of knows what's going on. And, and they also adopt out the second dog to the hotel lady at this time. So this is where my notes get a little jumbled, but um. Well, no, but this is, at this point they find Chloe at the like some kind of nature reserve museum thing. It's very unclear what this is. Yeah, and so because Chloe and Delgado see the sign of her, so they're and they start barking at the sign it, yeah. like, "Oh my God, is that the dog in the picture?" Oh yeah. And so they call Rachel and Sam, and they're on their way, and then, of course... The The bad guys are also on their way. Yes, because, you know, Diablo is... He has, like, a tracker, and they're following him, and so Chloe is, like, taken out by one of the rangers to go to the bathroom in the middle of the forest, which doesn't really make sense, and she gets abducted by Diablo while this is happening, and it's a whole jumble of then Delgado, like, has smells her and Poppy is chasing them. And it's a whole mishmash of... Right, and Poppy ends up in the van somehow, in the bad guy's van. Yeah, and he's able to, like, jump out and rescue her. By biting the guy's nose. And they're in the middle of all these ruins. like. And the- then suddenly Chloe, the lightest dog possible, falls in this hole in the ruins. Yep, and... You know, Delgado is running around, and then he get he sees the iguana and the rat, and so he confronts them, and they're like, "Oh, smell the scent." He's like, "I can't." They're like, she but then he you. suddenly can. He's like Chanel number five, and then he can smell her. So he's leading the people to her, and all they just know, oh, he wants us to follow him. Okay, sure. Yeah. Um, and they go through the ruins, and they catch one bad guy. And, you know, Poppy's in a cage, and Chloe's, like, rescuing him, and then the bad guy is chasing them, and, you know, there's a showdown. It's a big showdown of Delgado and Diablo, and then Chloe's down and out for a second. Oh, no, she's she's dead. Oh, no, you're feeling better, Ocho. Yeah, you're feeling better, Ocho. You're feeling better, Ocho. (laughs) But before that, the whole thing is her bark. Oh, yeah, she found her bark. Where she barks like a actual lion. Which is like, that's not a thing. Yeah. I found my bark. I barked. And the guy, yeah, and then the guy throws her against the wall. And then she's, you know, dead, but not dead, like we said. Yeah. It's over. Oh, wait, no. Um, and they capture, you know, the main villain. And somehow the Doberman gets away. 
Yeah, which makes no sense or really even matters. But somehow Delgado has to go after Diablo. Oh, no, wait, no, we're going to make you a cop dog. Yeah. And, you know, we have this collar with this badge in our front you're seat the, ready you're to be go. You're going to be our new canine. Yeah, and... Then we cut back to Beverly Hills where they just get home. Aunt Viv is coming home. Oh, it smells like Mexico number five. Yeah, because she... Oh, it has an earthy smell. Urban and earthy. Yeah, and, like, they get home, she gets home just in time, blah, 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 and it's like, oh, well, and then everything is happy and poppy and, you know. Um, and she's like, prissy, no moss. Yeah, she's like, Beverly Hills, yes, prissy, no moss. That's the end of the movie. That's the end of the movie. Well, it's and then, uh, during interesting the, end. you know, during the credits, Poppy's giving this whole thing of, oh, then he caught Del uh, Diablo and he got adopted by some person with... You know, he had to wear a pink dress or something. And yeah, then which was weird. And talks about all what happened to all these dogs or whatever after the fact. Yeah, like, one of them was like a spokesman for toothpaste or something. It's just dumb. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah, is what I it was. I was done by that point. Yeah, it's, <sighs> talking through it makes me like it less. But, a little um, bit, yeah. <laughs> it's just not a very good movie. It's not great. It's, you know. But that being said, what was your favorite part, Kelly? Um, so if initially I had a couple. Like, I liked the stupid dog barking phone call. I thought that was, like, the only part of the movie I actually thought was funny. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm going to go with... Well, and I liked the dogs getting homes because that's just cute. But I'm going to go with the Chihuahua Colt where he's, you know, walking her through the ruins. Yep. So and... we both had the same favorite part of a Chihuahua Rescue. I just wish that that would have been more of the focal part of the of, movie. Like her learning that she's a Chihuahua who's a real dog. and Yeah. And yeah, like, and a like, little more spiritual. It would have been nice. And yeah. like at the end, like, you know, they come in and rescue her at the end. Like, I just it just could have been the whole, but really this whole movie could have been redone to be better. better i don't know you're feeling better ocho so i also like the part where she got booted from the hotel that was nice oh it, oh it touched me the, yeah, yeah oh it touched me and oh my god i'm ugly and terrifying and oh no i'm alone on the streets now i liked that that was good yeah no she it's with a small shout to the food in the shoe scene yeah my <laughs> other ones were i mean it, the whole thing with, like, the rat and the iguana, the only thing I liked with them was the grocery scene where he's chasing them. I yeah, just, that was pretty good. It, it, it was unnecessary, but it was good. Well, the, yeah, and it just, it didn't, I I just would have done this whole movie totally differently. But, yeah, and the dogs getting homes, I just thought that was really sweet. I just, I love that. Um, Musically, it just had a bunch of dumb pop songs. Yeah, it had, you know, the rich girl Gwen Stefani song, but it had, don't, we can't forget. Bad to the bone. <laughs> Bad to the bone. <laughs> I'm too sexy by right, said Fred. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, and then a little tiny bit of Hero by Enrique Iglesias. Yeah, which was very bizarre. A song called Caliente by Los Pericos. Caliente. Um, and then we can't forget our favorite, Chihuahua. Dun, 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 dun. Chihuahua. Yeah. By Louis Oliveriat and his Bandalua boys. I'm probably saying that wrong, but that's yeah. who it was. Yeah. Chihuahua. 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 We're the king of all. Okay. So our main character, Chloe, the super stereotypical rich. <sighs> I'm just a. I, I, it was fine. The characters in this movie are the weakest part of the movie, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like, then, then you also have Delgado, the stereotypical cop that lost his way. Yeah, the character, the characters in this movie are just basic, not that interesting, not that good. And our El Diablo stereotypical bad dog. Yeah, uh, even a Doberman at that. Could Doberman could yeah, even been yeah. like a golden retriever, like make a golden retriever the bad dog. Come on. Yeah, something. something. Something else besides the Doberman. And then we have Vasquez, the stereotypical criminal who is super hateable because he's a dogfighter. And then we have our side characters, Pop- Poppy, Heart of Gold, Sam, Heart of Gold, Rachel, Ho with a Heart of Gold. Yeah, she, she's just dumb. Like, it, it, that's what I mean. Well, yeah, she's a dumb hoe, but at the end, it, it, she kind of has a heart of gold because she gets those dogs adopted. They, like, redeem her basically, as having a heart of gold later on. 
Yeah, no, it's She's just, the hoe with the heart of gold. Yeah, no, the characters were all bad and not that likable across and the board. And not that great, yeah. Like, not good. Um, so the cinematography, there was really weird places that the, the CGI was really noticeable. Basically, the cougars. Well, the cougars and the part where uh, Delgado is running to jump on the train... Oh, that was really bad. And like any yeah. any time that Delgado was like running and carrying Chloe was yeah, really awkward. Yeah, yeah. And then my favorite at the very end, the CGI dog tears when Poppy thinks that Chloe is dead. Oh my god! Yeah, that's like, and terrible. I think I think this is kind of in between when they had really poor CGI and started to get really believable CGI. Right. Right. Because it was really bad. Like, the, the the cinematography was not very good in this movie. And there it was really a, wasn't. There was a couple of weird scenes where they did, like, a different camera angle. Like, a different filming style, almost. In, like, three or four scenes. And I don't remember which ones they were. But it was weird. Like, it was not Fair good. Enough. Fair enough. Um, I mean, you basically mirrored what I, have to say, what I had to say. Just not too distracting. The lip... Part was good with the dogs, but the bad cougars to me were really. It was really bad. bad. It, yeah, it, it, that ugh, just it, I would have just yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. So, any quotable lines for you, Kelly? The closest I came to food was a used churro. <laughs> Your bark will come when you need it most. Oh, along with. No moss. No moss. No moss. Um, so yeah, not much. Um, what was your biggest surprise or disappointment, David? Uh, I was surprised by the crime element and the whole Mexico thing. I did not think that this would have anything to do with anything other than Beverly Hills and a chihuahua. Yeah, I was definitely surprised by that, and... I just was really surprised that it was even remotely watchable. Oh, yeah. And granted, it's mainly because we love chihuahuas. I know that that's a fact. Yeah. But it's... I guess. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't like, oh my god, I'm going to chew my arm off bad. But that's what I'm saying, is I was surprised it wasn't... I didn't, yeah. I didn't yeah. even have an, an inkling to nibble at my arm. There was no <laughs> no close to chewing I off. mean, I wasn't, I wasn't terrifyingly bored like I am for a lot of these, so that was good. If you remade this movie... <sighs> I mean, the whole story would be different. Well... I, like, I, I feel like they really needed to go the route of the fish-out-of-water, Beverly Hills-focused thing. Sure. Or they needed to make it more about the Chihuahua cult. Like, Aztec, historical... So, that's kind of where I was going to go, but in a much more micro way. I was going to say, no cougars. No, no cougars. They basically... the I would take over with the dogs rescuing them from the desert, dying of dehydration, and getting saved that way. Yeah, that would have been a much better and, way. And then going on and doing a better Aztec thing from there. That that would be my fix for this movie. Yeah, because then they could have had something where Diablo comes in and finds them. Or, and, you or know, at the end, the Aztec dogs save them from Diablo and they all eat Diablo together would be nice. Yeah, like a circa, like a hyena Lion King situation. Right, right, right. Just like, like we that. We must sacrifice him yeah, to yeah. the Chihuahua lords. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whoa. Um, so final thoughts. It's a um, good, silly, dog loving movie for kids, really. Yeah, if you like Chihuahuas, you'll love this movie. If you if you are a Chihuahua owner, you'll probably love this movie. If you're not, you probably won't like it that much. Um uh, it could. It's not a good movie, David. If you're a dog lover, you might like it. Um, yeah, but there's a lot of dog lovers who don't like chihuahuas. Did you find a budget? I did. The budget for this movie was $20 million. Imagine if you're, like, Jamie Lee Curtis and you get the script for Beverly Hills Chihuahua. She must have gotten paid outrageously to do nothing in this movie. But that's what I mean, like, Beverly Hills Chihuahua. They basically paid her to attach her name to it. So out of that $20 million... They made a hundred and forty nine million and some change. Oh, that's why there's two more of these. (laughs) 
which thankfully all came out on video. Yeah. Thankfully. Thankfully. Because I don't think I could watch two more. I mean, I kind of want to know, like, what happens. I, just, I, I am curious, but I don't want to watch I don't want to watch the movie. Like, I just want to... I'm, I'm guessing there's going to be puppies in there somewhere where... Uh, uh, so, Kelly, if you rated this movie... <laughs> What would your rating be? Well, of course, you know, I'm going to rate it, David. <laughs> oh, um, so if I was going to give it the Chihuahua bump, you know, because I no, have... No, what's your rating? What's your rating? My actual rating is is 45%. My If I didn't like Chihuahuas, it would be more like a 38%. If I was only going off of my pure love for Chihuahuas, it would be more like 58 mm. So I put it kind of in the middle of 40, <laughs> at forty five percent. So I tried to to curb the Chihuahua bump that my love gave for it. So I I feel like I tried to even this out as much as possible with all my loves and my hates and all of this. And what I landed on is exactly what I think this movie is, which is the dead middle of Disney movies what? of good and bad. It's fifty. Okay. So I rated it 50. I think that this is kind of like the Mason-Dixon line, the divider. It's This is kind of like the the center of good and bad of these movies. That's a good take on that. Yeah. We, we, yeah. we felt the same, relatively the same way about right, it. Right, right. It's just kind of like it could tip any way, but really I'm going to call this the neutral movie. Because, like, I really wanted to rate it higher because, like, the chihuahuas are so cute. Right, right. And Me too. All, and all the dogs are cute. Like, I want to adopt all of them. But, <laughs> but really, when I look at it strictly from a critical, it's like, no, it's really bad. So, but yeah, 45%. And you said 50 So I think that's a pretty good... Yeah, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good boom, boom, boom. What do you think the critics get? Oh, it cannot movie? be good. It can't be good. I'm going to guess it's like a 27%. So, critically, 40 Oh, that's higher than I thought it would be. People, 51. So it's just kind of right in line with what we're saying. Yeah, it's... I really thought it would have been a lot lower than 40% for the critics because it's... So now it's time for Kelly's favorite part of the podcast. Beverly Hills Chihuahua 2. <laughs> Even though that's not on our list. Thank <laughs> God that's not on our list. It's number 181. Oh. Oh, wait a minute. 181. Okay. So that's going to be in the 90s? Yeah. Oh. 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 There's a lot of good opportunity there. There is a lot of good opportunity there. Good prime Disney movie real estate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is it animated? No. Oh, live action 90s Disney movie. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. I'm scared to find out. All right, so it's from 1993. It's The Adventures of Huck Finn. Oh, I've seen this. Does it have JTT in it? Yes, it yeah, does. Yeah, I thought it did. Yeah. So this is not a good movie. And it has, I believe, Rachel Lee Cook as Becky. Okay, okay. Okay, who's Huck Finn? Because uh, I assume JTT has to be Tom Sawyer. Tom and Huck, right? Well, it's Huck Finn, but oh. yeah, Tom and Huck are the two main dudes, if it's right. I think I've seen this. Maybe I'm thinking of a different movie. Um... <laughs> Because Huck Finn should have black hair, but maybe they made it JTT and didn't care. I think this is the one with JTT. Well, and no, I think so too. And when we say Jonathan, when we say JTT, everybody knows. Does everybody know? If they don't, we don't deserve. They don't deserve for us okay. to tell them. I don't know who the other kid is, but I've. I feel like that's the whole thing: is that it's him and some other kid, but we could both be very wrong, so we'll see. I've read the book, I love the book. If this is the movie I'm thinking it is, I've definitely seen it, don't remember anything about it, other than JTT and uh, Rachel Lee Cook being mm -hmm. Becky. Mm -hmm. But Have you I read the book? Yeah, of course. Okay, okay. Yeah, no, that's required reading in high school. No, 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 I know, but I mean, I don't know if it is anymore, I had to kind of yeah, check. Yeah, that, that's... Because it was required reading in middle school. <laughs> oh, wait, maybe it was middle school. Yeah. I don't remember. So, it was required reading yeah. at some point. I don't think I don't think they read it anymore though because it has the N word. Oh right, 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 right about eight hundred and fifty five times. So what do you think it's about, David? <laughs> I think it's about Hug Finn. Yeah, and it's it's you know obviously it's not like a modern. It's retelling. gotta be a watered down version. Though. Oh yeah, and that do they call him N word? Wait, Jim? okay. What's the title of this movie? 
Exactly. I think The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, which is because the title of the book. I'm thinking of a complete... Because I thought there was a movie called... Oh, yeah, The Adventures of Huck Finn. Because I thought there was literally a movie called Tom and Huck. And that's what I might be thinking gotta, of, which was Jason I'm going to look that up now and just see if there's something called... Because... I could be insane, but I thought that that was the one with JTT. Which might even kind of check out, because 1993 almost seems early for me for oh, JTT. Oh, okay. So Tom and Huck was the one with JTT. Ooh, so neither of us know what this yeah, is. Yeah, so... Oh, interesting. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, I've, very I've, interesting. So I've seen Tom and Huck, which... But you haven't seen The Adventures of Huck Fan. ...is also on Disney+. Plus. So is they, it the same movie you think that they changed the name? Wait, let me... This is... Go back to the list real quick. Yeah, because that's the one that I've seen. Ooh, I feel like this might be the movie, the same movie. It's not. 1993, right? Oh, yeah, 1995 is Tom and Huck. Interesting. So, okay, so I have not seen this. I've yeah. seen Tom and Huck, which has J- JTT and Rachel Lee Cook. This I have not seen. So, because this is called... I think Tom and Huck was like a trendy, like... It was a retelling of the middle of both stories. Right. And the Adventures of Huckleberry Finn is like the more traditional like Huck Finn. So I bet you this is gonna be similar to like a Squanto vibe. Like I think so too. Yeah. I think I think that this is gonna be very un PC. Yeah. Yeah. And it's gonna have a lot of what we were afraid of it having. Yeah. Yeah. That's weird that they made two same storyline well, movies within two years of each other. Let's just let's just have a bet that this did real bad, and people <laughs> were real uncomfortable watching it. So they made the PC version two years later. But so, eh. but this remember in Squanto we were so surprised by like the whole monk thing. Like maybe this is no, like, has like a no, crazy side no, thing. I'm, no, I'm no. trying to be hopeful. This is the book. The next movie is going to have the crazy side thing that doesn't belong. This is the very uncomfortable book that they made ten years too late. Or even five years too late. Yeah. Because they could have got away with it five years before this, but not by 1993. Yeah. So So this is going to be uncomfortable. Um, so yeah, uh, in the meantime, if you'd like to follow us on social media... At the Disney movies on Facebook or Instagram. Like, subscribe, share, leave us a good old review comment. That would be great. We really, really appreciate that. Thank you. And or most importantly, just listen to the podcast if you want. You don't have to interact. That's all we really care about. That's all. That's all. Easy. And maybe share with a friend or two who may or may not like this. Yeah. Yeah. So, in the meantime, this has been At the Disney Movies at the Hearts. I'm Kelly. I'm David. Bye! Bye. Chihuahua. 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 Oh, Chihuahua. One to make you groove. Two to make you smooth. Three to make you free. Oh, Chihuahua. Oh. What? <laughs> Chihuahua. Oh, did you figure out how to watch the dog show? I already did. It's on Fox, dude. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. I didn't, you didn't say that. The best in show. Is it the big one? Is it the Westminster Purina whatever? It's usually in February, but they had to move it outdoors, so they moved it to June. Chihuahua. I don't think a Chihuahua would ever win the Westminster blah, blah, blah. They don't like Chihuahuas. I think there's been Chihuahuas in there, but they usually have one of those ugly things as the small dog. Or the the toy or whatever. The... The, uh, the thing with the nappy hair. Not nappy hair, but just like wispy, gross hair. The Chinese crested or whatever. Yeah, and it has the really tiny face. Yeah. And it has yeah. a little bow on top of its head. Yeah. 
Or one of those Cavalier King Charles. Oh, but those are so cute. Ugh. No, those so are... So basic. They're, they're so cute. I want to make you a group of 